Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? In a previous episode, we talked about my favorite game for console systems. This time around, let's take a look at what my favorite title is for the PC and why I think it's so special. I decided for this one, instead of doing it from in the car or just sitting on the couch and talking to camera, this being uploaded to YouTube and being visual medium, I really subscribe to the concept of show don't tell. So here we are in Mac OS 9, classic Macintosh operating system, and I'm going to show you my favorite computer game. Yeah, SimCity 2000. Some of you may have been able to guess that based on previous videos where I've kind of talked about my experiences with computing and, and technology and gaming and all that. But this game is really one that just stands out at me. Like I said in the previous podcast, I can't really pick one particular game as being my overall favorite just because there have been a few that have, have really resonated with me so much over the years. But in terms of games that you play on a computer that require like keyboard and mouse, by far SimCity 2000 is it. Let's get it fired up here. Yep, runs into 56 color mode. That kind of uh, indicates the age of this game. All right, and here we are. I think I've got a saved city loaded here. We can fire up, yeah. Okay, cool. So, there's a few reasons why I love this game. As I mentioned in my podcast episode about Mario 64, I really like games where you can explore and and just play around and do different stuff, you know? You can you can not have a whole lot of pressure. You can just kind of take your time and and enjoy the experience without really feeling like you have to complete the game or complete a task or whatever within a specific amount of time. SimCity 2000 is fantastic for that, in my opinion. Um, right now, I mean, you can see I'm. Uh, this is a newer city. I've got it paused. And this is something that I always did um, when I was a kid playing this game was I would start it out paused and get at least some city infrastructure up and running. Another thing that you may notice is I've got a crap ton of money already. Um, I almost always played this game using cheats. I remember the original version 1.0 version of this, the for the Mac, I should say. Um, there was a, a like a, a hack or a patch or something I don't quite remember for for that version 1.0 that basically unlocked everything right off the bat um, and then I think they kind of patched that vulnerability in later versions um, you can see I'm running 1.2 but what they left in the entire time was a cheat and the cheat is simply known as porn tips gazardo um, that's literally what you type into the keyboard in order to activate the cheat. At any point during the game, let's turn sound effects off here. Um, you can type that in and it gives you, uh, if memory serves, $500,000. Um, just right off the bat. And then you can just keep typing it over and over again um, to get you know more money whenever you want. It doesn't give you all the the unlockables right away that you normally get later on, like Arcologies and, and technology like fusion reactors and all that. You can get some of those by simply starting the game at a later date. You know, when you first start a level, it asks you what you know year you want to start in. The year you pick kind of governs the, uh, the, the level of technology that you have available to you. But some stuff you only get with time. That patch gave you everything. Porn Tips Gazardo just gives you money. But even still, it's I think it really enhances that sandbox aspect to it. I'm not big into cheating in games, but I play some City 2000 in a little bit of a different way than most. Um, another thing is I always turn disasters off. 
I'm not interested in having something else come in and wreck my city. I want to do that myself. You know, I want to be in charge of what goes where and and when things need to be replaced and all of that. So the way I typically play this is I'll go in and I'll start to build out some infrastructure. I'll at least get power and water like you can see I've got desalination here. Um, some water towers, you know, I'll get some basic zones going commercial, residential, industrial. Some basic infrastructure like police and fire and hospital. And then I'll unpause it. And I think we're probably at a point where we can unpause it. And let's just go to Turtle at this point. So SimCity 2000 is... It's, it's a game that has never been equaled or, or really well copied, in my opinion. Um, yes, there have been, you know, subsequent versions that have come out. And... I've tried them, you know, I've tried SimCity 3000, I tried SimCity 4. I honestly just never really could get into them because they actually almost added too much to the game. You know, you started having to worry about uh, garbage and traffic and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, on a deeper level than you normally would have to in SimCity 2000. I, I find this game to really kind of have the best balance of what you need to worry about and what you don't which i really like um it's it's not too easy but not too hard it's not too you know overly encompassing i guess is is a way to think about it it's it's got this graphic style and you can hear the music like it's it's very well rooted in the era that it came out you know this was from the the mid 90s it doesn't need a whole lot of horsepower to run but it it works really really well for what it is um it it kind of encompasses i guess to me at least what computing was like at that time you know, 256 colors, um, smaller resolution monitors, kind of crappy built-in audio. I mean, the thing originally shipped on a floppy disk, you know. Um, it, it didn't take up a ton of space. Older computers could run it just fine. But I, I, I think really the biggest reason why I enjoy this game so much is more than anything else nostalgia and i'll tell you the story as to what got me into this game as as much as it did when i was growing up i always wanted a mac uh, the first computer we ever had was an apple IIc which was a great computer and i spent tons of time playing all the educational titles and stuff on there you know number munchers and and carmen san diego boy that's a messed up looking intersection and, you know, and all those sorts of games. And it was fun, but eventually, you know, it showed its age, so we got a replacement computer. We ended up with just an IBM PC. Uh, just kind of a generic, you know, custom build, uh, like you would often see back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, you know, the custom building computers was much more common than, than it is now. So we had a PC running Windows 3.1, and I didn't really have many games for it. I remember doing more just kind of like screwing around, learning Windows, you know, painting type of programs, that kind of stuff. Uh, getting a little bit into desktop publishing, you know, I suppose. Just, you know, as a kid, just kind of screwing around, really. Um, but it was still fun in its own right. I really still, though, wanted a Mac. Uh, for some reason, they, they just looked really sleek and cool and modern. And I never got too many opportunities to play with Macs, you know, to, to, to sit down and use them. Hey, look at that. The people love me so dearly. They've thrown a, a spontaneous parade in my honor. Only people who do that in real life. So, you know, I'd occasionally get to use 
a Mac, but it'd be very rare. So they were that kind of added to the mystique, right? You know, you, you want what you can't have. I'd barely get to use one, but not for very long and, and all of that. A friend of mine, his family ended up getting a Mac. And he got me turned on to SimCity 2000. You know, I'd go over to his house. I'd get to play it a little bit at a time, just a few minutes at a time, because otherwise we would want to go out and ride bikes or whatever, right? It's no fun to sit there, you know, and watch your friend play, you know, a single player game. But one year at the school I went to, and this is, I guess, kind of an amusing story and really paints a picture as to what computing was like in the 80s and early 90s. We had a computer classroom. It was just one classroom that had computers in it. It was probably like 30 or 35 Apple IIe's. Um, and then maybe a dozen or so Laser 128's. Boy, that's really showing my age that I remember about those. Of all those computers, two of them had color monitors. The rest of them were the typical green screen. And we had computer class once a week um, for about, I don't know, like an hour maybe? Oh, what's going on over here? All my crap's getting abandoned. Um, clearly we want more industrial. So, you know, when it was our turn for computer class, we'd all run down the hall from our normal classroom over and line up outside the computer classroom because they didn't want just kids barging in there. And while we were standing in line, man, we just beat each other up to try and be the first two in line because the first two in line got to pick whatever computers they wanted when they let us go in the room. And of course, everyone wants the ones with the color monitors. So one year, they replaced all the computers in that com computer classroom with, you guessed it, Max. Um, it was probably 30 or 45 Mac LC3s with color monitors and they had local talk networking. So there were a couple of shared printers. I mean, this was long before computers, you know, uh, like we're getting on the internet in schools and stuff. It was dial up was still very much, um, the name of the game at that time, but it, it really cemented that I wanted a Mac. My parents were still plenty happy with the the PC that we had, but I convinced the the teacher in charge of the computer classroom because I had helped out in that computer classroom, you know, during during recess and stuff because I was a I was a dork. I was then, I still am now. Um I convinced her to let me borrow one over summer break one year. And of course, the first thing I did was I got a copy of SimCity 2000. And that entire summer, when I wasn't out riding the, my bike or mowing the lawn, I was playing this game. And it had such an impression on me because it was like, finally, I get to, you know, have that forbidden fruit, right? I, I finally get to use the computer that I had wanted to use, really learn it. You know, I learned about what Macs and everything are like, how to how to use one really. It became normal and, and comfortable. And it was, it was really, really fun. You know, and I spent just so much time playing this game. I had built up probably dozens of cities, just dozens and dozens of them. Uh, eventually saved up my allowance and bought a copy of the expansion, which was one was additional disaster scenarios, which I didn't really care about. The other one was what's called Skirk, and that's short for Sim City Urban Renewal Kit. That one gave you, it was kind of like a skin where you could buy and it had different appearances for all the buildings and everything, you know, so there would be like a futuristic one and, and different themes to all these building types. But then it also had an editor where you could go in. Oh, you know what? None of these people have water um, where you could go in and and design how you want 
the buildings to look you know it'd be like you're almost like you're sitting in you know ms paint or something like that but a custom built editor to make even the structures, you know, at a pixel by pixel level look exactly the way you want them to. Um, and, you know, and then I spent tons of time with that. And so I really attribute my, my passion for this game um, on that particular summer. You know, that one summer. Uh, I can't even remember what year that was. 90... Well, when did the LC3 come out? 90, it came out in 93, so that was probably the summer of 1994. Um, that that I got to borrow that machine. And I remember having to beg that teacher into letting me do it. Um, because I'm sure she would have gotten in all sorts of trouble if something had happened to it. Uh, but my parents were on board with, with it. and You know, so I had a computer in my room my bedroom for the first time and and just just played this endlessly oh the budgets who cares about the budgets whatever I'm cheating I don't care about budgets so I I in terms of these style of games I think SimCity 2000 is really kind of unmatched in that it's been there there have been a number of other games that have tried to come out to to you know do the whole city simulator thing some of them better than others sad to say a lot of people have kind of written off EA's versions of these games especially Sim City the most recent one but the always on internet and it when it first came out it just crashed like all the time so many problems with that game so many bugs and that's just an incredibly far departure from what this game was you know this is like the simplest game it can be the original sim city of course was the top down view I love that this has the 3D, the isometric view, but I mean, you can't even go in like pick your own specific angle. Like you get four angles, that's it. You know, I can't raise the camera or lower the camera. I can't do an angle in between the two. It's it, it's it, because of its limitations. I think this game is actually even better, um, just because it doesn't try to do too much. It, it's really a game to just sit there and chill and well, play in the sandbox, you know, as I did when I was 12? Was I 12 back when that all happened? I don't quite remember, but... You know, some, some newer games have actually done pretty well. Um, I've heard lots of good about Cities Skylines, and maybe someday I'll pick up a copy of that and give it a whirl, but I almost don't want to because I just know that nothing is going to top the memories and experience that I've had with this game. You know, the, the, the music is crappy. Yeah, it's crappy mini music, but, you know, that nostalgia thing, that's just what I remember. And it fits in so well with, yeah, the 256 color graphics and, and all of that. I, I'm just not sure that I want to try to replace SimCity 2000 with something else. I'm just happy that I've got the ability to continue to play this game um, in kind of a roundabout way. I'm doing this right now in an emulator. I can tell you this, if I ever run across a, a decent chunk of money, I'll, and I mean like millions of dollars because it'll probably take that much, uh, I would not I would not hesitate to consider hiring a lawyer, heading over to Electronic Arts headquarters, and negotiating to license a copy of the SimCity 2000 source code. And then with any money that I had left after that, hiring a developer and getting them to simply port that to be a modern operating system version. You know, get it so it'll run on 64-bit Windows or you know, modern Mac OS. Keep 
the rest of the game the same. Keep everything exactly the same. Just get it to run natively. But I would have them do one little tweak. And that would be, I would want them to take the map and quadruple its size. Um, you know, when monitors were small, this was a decent sized map. But now we have bigger monitors and I want an even bigger map. You know, I want I want city property that just goes on for days and days and days because I I remember with a lot of those cities that I built back when I was a kid, I would fill them up. I'd run out of space, um, and I think having just a gigantic map would be a ton of fun. Looks like everybody wants more industrial here. Or more uh, commercial, excuse me. Well, they want more of both. Let's go get some more industrial going here. I mean, you can see some of the limitations of running this in an emulator, like the centering tool goes too fast. <laughs> That's why I've been trying to use the scroll the entire time. But it is really a testament um, to how well this game you know, was designed that Decades later, people, and I know I'm not the only one, that there are people who still consider this one of, one of, if not the best game for them, you know? I, I know I'm not the only one um, who thinks this is their favorite game. And that's really just a testament maybe to game design in general from that era of kind of the early to mid-90s. When computers that had decent capability to run games were actually getting to be at a price point that people could afford. Maybe it's just because of a bunch of other factors that I can't think of. I don't know. Um, there's, there's just a lot that's really tough to describe about why I like this game so much. Other than just kind of falling back on, well, you know, it was... It was a nostalgia thing, but even without the nostalgia aspect to it, I, I still think I'd probably really enjoy this game. You know, if even if this was the very first time that I'd be playing it, knowing the types of games that I like, there there's a real quality to it. You know, it's like why people still like playing side-scrolling platformers. You know, look at look at a game like uh, New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, the the graphics themselves are nicer, but the gameplay is really not a whole lot different than the original Mario titles from the '80s. You know, yeah, there's a few new features here and there. You've got some new some new moves, some new items, but it's still a very similar experience to the way it was back then. What tool am I even using? Oh, power lines. Yeah, I need to put some up here. And I think that there's something to be said for trying to keep things simple. You know, you don't necessarily have to always try to go and, and make a game or a platform or a system be as far advanced and amazing as, and, and as whiz-bang and and crazy as you need to, sometimes simpler is better. And maybe that's what this game does so well, is it takes a relatively complex topic, such as designing a city, and having to deal with all the stuff that the people in the city want to need, at least for the, you know, for the most part, and doing it in such a way where you don't feel overwhelmed. You know, you don't feel like you're constantly having to go in and babysit stuff. Um, you, you know, you can feel like you can just get kind of an area up and running and sit back and it'll just keep doing stuff. You know, you don't have to worry about, oh, well, garbage day, you know, I need to pick the right garbage day or this route for that these buses are taking is not optimal anymore and I've got to do all this and that. I mean... This game has just the right amount, I think, of hands-on 
to it without becoming draining. And that's that's I think oftentimes really tough to do in a game. You know, it's it's really easy to maybe let your mind just kind of go and and keep adding features to a, a wish list. But to know what to not put into a game maybe even harder than trying to figure out what to put into it to begin with. I need more water. These people are running out of water. And that's just something I think SimCity 2000 does really, really well. Just knowing how far to go and when to stop without becoming too basic and also without becoming too overbearing. So before I just ramble on too much longer, because I'm sure you don't want to just sit here and watch me play SimCity 2000. I don't know, maybe you do. And I'm sure I'm not doing a very good job of this podcast because I'm actually trying to play this game instead of just randomly click on buttons and, and play it. But I am, of course, curious as to your thoughts. All oh, these people definitely need water. I need more pumps. That's what it is. I'm running out of water pumps. Let's get some of that going here. Um, do you have much experience with this game? I mean, I know I've got a lot of younger viewers who may have never played this. Um, but I know I've got some older viewers who probably have. Probably have a lot of experience with this game. I'm just curious as to your thoughts. Have you ever played this? What are your thoughts? Um, not just on this game, but on the whole city simulator thing in general. Of course, I'm curious what are, you know, your favorite PC titles. I talked about favorite console games in the last episode. Um, but PC titles in many ways can be very, very different than console games. Um, not just in how you control them, but where they can take you and what their capabilities can be. These days, maybe not quite as much, but I think in the 90s and early 2000s, the two w could be very different. So I'm curious, what are your favorite PC games, either new or old, doesn't really matter. Um, and do you really see any potential for titles to split again? You know, where we've been seeing, like I said, the, the, there being kind of a merging between PC and console gaming where sometimes it's the same game, you know, and, and playing on one platform or the other doesn't really matter. Do you see there being maybe a renewed push for PC unique games um, that really just don't wouldn't ever work on a console. They'd be too cumbersome, you know. Like I know that they came out with a Super NES version of SimCity 2000. I would never play it. I would just never play that game. As much as I love this game, I couldn't play it on a Super NES just because it'd be a frustrating experience to just use the controller. You know, this is a, a game you have to have a mouse and keyboard for. So do you see there being much of a future for PC unique games like that? Um, and do you have any examples of where that might be headed? You know, any, any titles that are out now that you think really kind of exemplify um, the, the concept of unique PC gaming um, instead of things really kind of coming together? Of course, I'm always curious as to your thoughts on future podcast topics, uh, feedback. Is there anything in particular you'd like to hear me talk about on one of these? Something that you think would make for a good, uh, a good episode? Um, do you like these? I know I'm not in the car this time. I've actually been seeing some really interesting comments about some people absolutely hating it when I'm in the car and some people actually really liking it, which I'm kind of surprised about. Uh, obviously, this one, I think works better in this format at least it was definitely more fun for me to do in this format but any suggestions for future topics are of course of course always appreciated um, and i do take them all into account so if you like the video i would appreciate a thumbs up be sure to subscribe if you haven't already you can follow me on twitter and instagram at this does not comp and as always thanks for watching